I don't care how pessimistic you are, I'm telling you. There are very good reasons to be more confident in this Florida Gators defense this year. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast and on YouTube. Happy Thursday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find our Florida Gators Dynasty with Whole Nine Sports, W H O L E N I N E Sports on YouTube. Um, beat Miami Week One, so all I'm saying. Today's episode of Locked On Gators is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, and then the All Star break is finally wrapping up. Sports are not really sporting like I want them to, not sporting like they used to, but this summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day. All summer long, visit fandle.com to get started. And like I said, there are, I think there are some very good reasons to be pretty confident in this Florida Gators defense. I'm not saying they'd be great, but and I'm not saying, oh yeah, they're going to be better than the horrible defense that we saw last year. I'm not saying it's as simple as that. That's, they're going to be better. My point is that it's not going to be, well, you can't get worse. I think there are plenty of reasons to be confident that this defense will, will reach the at least average levels that I think the Florida Gators need. Like, think about it. If you had an average defense in 2023, you probably win eight games. Maybe. Like, so I think that that's where I'm at. I think that there's plenty of reason to believe that you have an average defense this year at minimum, which is a sad spot to be in. But the truth, uh, I think the biggest thing is the personnel upgrades. Defensive line, yes. Worse individual pass rushers, mostly because you lost Princely. Uh, but I do think that as a unit, they could still be really productive as pass rushers. I think TJ Searcy has a very high ceiling. Justice Boone's coming back. I still need to see it from him. He's someone that even in the 2022 film, I was like, I'm really not sold. I need to see more from him. Uh, and then, of course, 2023, he was injured the entire time. But if he takes the step that that we think he can, then that'll be fantastic for the team. If he is the player that a lot of people think he can be, that'll be fantastic for the team. Caleb Banks looked good in the spring game. He had flashes last year. He's reportedly put it together this year. Seeing that individual or, or the individual progression and go, hey, as a unit, they could be pretty productive, I think is big, but also I think that this defensive line should be stout against the run. I don't have expectations for Cam Jackson as a pass rusher. I don't. I can tell you now, I never will. He's he's just a guy that I look at, and I don't mean just a guy as in he's a jag. I mean, he's just a guy that I look at as you're a really good nose tackle, stuff the run. That's that's what you do, and I'm fine with that. Honestly, I, I'm fine with that kind of player. I think it really helps to win those early downs against the run. Great. Uh, Joey Slackman against the run. Tremendous player there. Uh, my my knee just popped so loud. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that, but my knee just popped. Uh, but Joey Slackman, tremendous against the run. I think TJ Searcy, really good against the run. Going to be much better this year at containing the run from the outside. Uh, Kentucky game is going to be a real test for these guys, linebackers mostly, but defensive line as well. The linebacker room in general, honestly, might be your most improved room across the entire team from 2023 because you had Shamar James for eight years, eight, eight weeks last year, or eight games last year. Didn't have him for the final four, or sorry, I believe you had him for seven, and then he missed the final five. You're going to have him for hopefully 12 this year. He is back healthy. Last year, you had Scooby Williams starting next to Shamar when Shamar was healthy. This year, it's going to be Pop Howard. Massive upgrade. Massive upgrade. And I understand Pop Howard's entering his true sophomore year. Massive upgrade over what Scooby was last year. And again, I have nothing against Scooby. I'm not the kind that goes, oh, Scooby's terrible. He wasn't good, but I think he was playing out of position. I think that he did the part, the intangible parts, I think he did really well. I think he controlled what he can control. I just think he wasn't good enough for it. Um, also, linebacker depth-wise, Wingo, healthy. Jaden Robinson, year two. 
Miles Graham, Aaron Childs back, Deuce Spurlock the second back. You lost Manny Nunnery, you lost Scooby Williams. You've upgraded that room significantly. Significantly. Okay. I think Jaden Robinson can give you what Manny gave you last year. I don't think he'll play as much, but I think he can give you realistically what Manny what Manny Nunnery gave you in terms of talent. I think Pop Howard's a big upgrade over Scooby Williams. Linebackers the most improved room in this on this roster. It's just just where I go for it. Corner. The area where I'm maybe most skeptical defensively, um, only because I look at who you started last year, and it was Jason Marshall and Jalen Kimber and Devin Moore, a couple. Devin Moore was injured. Hopefully he's healthy this year. Okay? I think that it's a good sign that I think this is the first spring where he remained healthy. So good sign there. Strength and conditioning program being upgraded will probably help him. Uh, You lost Jalen Kimber. Not a bad thing. Jason Marshall's back, hopefully going to be much improved. He seems like he just moves more confident this year. I think that that will help him just be more productive as a corner. I think you got to play with a certain kind of – like you have to play with a certain kind of confidence to be good at defensive back. You just do because you're going to get beat. You're going to lose reps. You have to be willing to come back and just go, yep, don't care. You got lucky. Things like that. Um, I will say that I think I've been generally – pretty consistent with oh and you have expectations for a lot of guys not everyone will step up however i've also said that not everyone will step up but some guys will exceed expectations and i think in the cornerback room there's enough youth where we go someone will step up i think i think it's safe to say that jakeem jackson Dijon johnson even if it's jameer grimsley teddy foster devin moore being healthy is good enough for me too i think that there's a lot to look at in this cornerback room and say there's a lot of potential if you get coached up you're gonna be really good there if we're confident will harris which i am we'll talk about that a little bit later then guess what you're gonna be pretty good in that room it's just about putting it together that's why i say i'm skeptical i really just don't know what they're gonna look like last year they were really bad new coach new strength and conditioning program, they have the opportunity to take a really big jump talent-wise. Um, also, you have Paul Monty McLean, who is apparently having a good week of workouts, showing up on time. Hopefully, he keeps that up. Um, and yeah, not kicked off the team, despite what Polkway says, but has been good this week as far as showing up. Hopefully, he keeps that up, and hopefully, he can contribute at some point. Uh, still hoping the best for him. Safety room, I mean, I am really confident in this room. Genuinely, I I am really confident in the safety room for the Florida Gators because you had a ton of youth last year. They got better, okay? ton of youth last year. They got better. They're going to be better. They've got the film. You added in Asa Turner who was a starting safety on a team that went to the college football playoff, went to the national championship. You added that to your room. You added Triquez Bridges, great depth piece. I I don't think he plays much. Great depth piece. Like your depth in that room is great. Greg Smith, dude. Like I, I said this after the spring game. I will continue to say this. The thing that makes me really confident on Greg Smith is how confident he played in that spring game i know it's the spring game i'm not talking about oh he made these tackles he made i'm talking about he moved with a kind of confidence you don't see from someone who's learning the position that's a great athleticism great mentality but the confidence i i I don't know how you can't be excited for what greg smith will become whether or not he does much this year just, I don't know how you can be not confident in what he brings to the table. And then, of course, there's the scheme changes for Florida that we'll probably see in 2024. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But NHL, done. NBA, done. All college sports, done. We got fewer games, okay? It's, it's, it's baseball and tennis carrying us through this time, right? But FanDuel, hear me out. Let's keep sports going whenever you want. All you have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime you're in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day 
all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Nice May Locked On Gators, your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast and on YouTube. And like I said, I think that scheme changes are going to be an important part of the Florida Gators finding more success in 2024 compared to 2023. Okay? I think that Ron Roberts' addition, I, I know he is not the play caller. Ron Roberts is not going to be the defensive play caller. Still going to be Austin Armstrong. He's still the defensive coordinator. Okay? However, Similar to offensively, you know, we go, oh, yeah, you know, Billy still said he's going to call plays, but Russ Callaway having a hand in the game plan is going to make a big impact on this team. The passing offense should be better because of Russ Callaway's impact. The play calling should be better because of Russ Callaway's impact. That's what I'm talking about when I say that Ron Roberts will make a big impact with this defense schematically. I expect the Florida Gators 2024 defense to be – a bit of a hybrid between what Florida was last year schematically, not saying productive wise, execution wise, schematically, and what Auburn was schematically in 2023. I think that you're going to take the best pieces of both and try to kind of mix them in. Like like I think Auburn last year had a lot more too high safety looks. I think that you see Florida do that a lot more this year. I think they should have did it more last year. You look at how many times Florida just got bombed on defensively, I don't know why they didn't go to safeties, too high safeties more often. I don't. I think that with Ron Roberts, you see less cover three. Because don't forget, last year also we saw Florida get beat a lot with slot receivers. Tight ends were just killing you. They'd work up the seams all they wanted to. The LSU game, I mean, Brian Thomas with the slot fade, Malik Neighbors slot fade. Like, Brian Thomas had the best slot fade in football last year, NFL or college. It was savage. Him and Jaden Daniels had great chemistry. I know there's probably a lot of Jags fans that listen to this. Congratulations. Brian Thomas is really freaking good at football, okay? Um, think I think that he was really good. Uh, glad to see that he went in the first round. Have a football player. High ceiling. At the, at the worst, he's a better Gabe Davis already, okay? But I do think that when you look at Florida losing like that, a lot of it was, oh, yeah, they played a lot of cover three. They played cover one a good bit. They went single high a lot. And I don't think that that's sustainable to do when teams are throwing bombs on you. Like you look at how teams defend the Kansas City Chiefs, the Buffalo Bills. You know what they do? They put two high safeties and they say, hey, take underneath, earn it, beat us that way because you're not going to bomb on us. Florida needs to take that approach. And, And Ron Roberts took that approach a lot with Auburn last year. He'd go, hey, we're going to run cover two. We're going to run quarters. We're going to make you attack us underneath and and consistently go bend, don't break. I don't think it'll be as dramatic of a difference there this year, but I do think that you'll see a lot more cover two, a lot more quarters, and less cover three this year. I also think that with your improved safety room, you can do that. Like with, With quarters coverage specifically, having those four deep safeties or four deep zones, basically, if you're playing madden you know what quarters is yeah corners have to watch those deep passes to the outside okay they're gonna watch that safeties get the help over top they get to shade all around safeties have a lot of range to cover there because they're supposed to be helping you there if you're a corner and someone carries vertically safety can look at you safety can help over i think that florida this year is going to do that a lot more limit those big plays make teams beat you underneath and i think that we see that a lot. I think that, and I've, I've said this plenty of times, I think that we see the pass rush plan defensively improve significantly for Florida. Last year, when Florida blitzed, it was the linebackers. I've, I've been trying to tell you this. Last year, when Florida blitzed, it was the linebackers. That is not what Austin Armstrong did at Southern Miss. I've said before, I think a lot of that is because of how bad your linebackers were in coverage that Florida would basically go, we want a blitz. We need to generate a pass rush. If we send a safety or a slot or a corner, then guess what? Yeah, I mean, the linebackers in coverage. Nobody wanted that, right? 
Nobody wanted Scooby or Wingo in coverage last year. It didn't go well when they were in coverage. So I think that a lot of that was, hey, we can't blitz the safety. We can't blitz the slot. This year, you can do that. I think that we see that open up. That's why I, th- I think the pass rush plan gets a lot better with that. I think we see more effective stunts. And also, I will say this, uh, Florida's offensive line during the spring game did a pretty damn good job of handling stunts. Like Damian George did a good job specifically handling stunts. If you're part of the insider program, you got the scouting reports. I wrote that in Damian George's. I wrote, hey, really good job handling stunts. I will give him credit where credit's due. Uh, but I think that Florida's pass rush plan in 2024 gets a lot better. You see Sharif Denson blitzing, Jordan Castell. You get to do things like that. When you go single high, especially, and you've got, hey, uh, Asa or Jordan Castell's in the box, Sharif Denson's in the nickel, you could blitz either of them and have some fun with it. And I think that you see that this year. I think you see a much improved pass rush plan, and that should help your defense. Because I, I, I think that with Ron Roberts, you know, we talk about creepers a lot. He's going to help you there. He's the guy that popularized it. He's going to help you. And he popularized it a long time ago because he's been coaching for a long time now. To wrap up today's episode of Locked on Gators, we are talking a little bit about the defensive coaching changes. Ron Roberts, like I mentioned, I'm not going to harp too much on... The scheme changes, like I just mentioned, more too high, but more uh, DB blitzes. Like Ron Roberts loves the slot blitzing. He does that a lot throughout his career. It's always been a big thing for him. He will continue to do that at Florida. I'm assuming he's going to work that into the game plan more, especially considering how much Sharif Jensen has shown he can do it. Both last year against Florida State, this year in the spring game, he did a good job there. I think that we see him do that more. But like I mentioned, Ron Roberts has been coaching a really long time, 30 years of coaching experience. 30 years. And like we talked about this in the, the uh, a Twitter space like last week where the coaching tree for Ron Roberts is just, it, it's awesome. You look at guys like, I, I know that we don't, you know, not, not very high on him here, but guys like Patrick Tony, guys like Austin Armstrong, Dave Aranda, uh, Pete Golding, Dan Lanning, they run that defensive system that Ron Roberts really popularized back at, I mean, really, really probably back before he was even at Delta State, but like Delta State is where he brought out a lot of those names. Like Pete Golding, the, the DC at, at uh, Ole Miss, we had a conversation about him in a Twitter space uh, a week or two ago, and I was like, yeah, he's part of that Ron Roberts tree. Like he does that. He was a DC under him for four years and coached under him for a total of five. He did that. He does it. Like Ron Roberts has 30 years of experience. And a lot of the modern defensive schemes you see are because of Ron Roberts. Now you get that guy's brain in the room with Austin Armstrong. Austin Armstrong gets a little mad scientist with the blitz. He maybe does a little bit too much at times. Ron Roberts can kind of help you rein that in. Kind of help you figure out things. That's the big thing about Ron Roberts. Like we talk, When Austin Armstrong got hired, a lot of the conversation around him getting hired was, you brought in a kid. You brought in a guy with two years of defensive coordinator experience. Two years at Southern Miss to be the defensive coordinator for the University of Florida. No Power 5 experience, now Power 4, no Power 5 experience, and he's your D.C., What a bad decision that was. Like, that was a ton of the conversation. What did Billy Napier do? I mean, you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe he's in a little too over his head. I'm going to go get Ron Roberts with 30 years of coaching experience, and we're going to put those two brains together. That's why I'm high on it. You brought in a guy with 30 years of coaching experience, with a coaching tree that has head coaches that are known as defensive gurus. Dave Aranda is one of the most well-renowned defensive minds in football right now. And has been for years. The LSU defenses he put together were amazing. He's he's always been great with defensive scheme. He's a Ron Roberts guy. <laughs> like, like he's a Ron Roberts guy. That's what he is. And so you're now bringing the guy that helped Dave Aranda become Dave Aranda. You're bringing him in because don't forget they were at Delta State. Again, like I said, Delta State is a lot of the time where. 
uh, Ron Roberts brought his coaching tree out. Okay. He did that a lot. So now you've, you've got them together. You've got Ron Roberts. You've got Austin Armstrong. They're there. Gerald Chapman, new defensive line coach. I've yet to hear a single negative thing about him. And I asked around because he's, he's coached in a lot of places. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask everybody I can everywhere I can about Gerald Chapman. I have not heard a single negative thing about him. I told you when I, I did a live show when Florida announced the hiring and I had reached out to someone. I'll read the quote again, just because I, I found it so funny. Um, but I, I reached out to a source at Tulane um, where basically they were like, hey, F off. <laughs> they were, they were, I said this before he got hired. Um, I asked them about it and they were like, hey, F off. Um, he's fantastic. F off. Uh, obviously, Florida did not F off. They hired Gerald Chapman. And I think one of my favorite things about him is, is the way that he coaches defensive linemen is that he kind of makes you go, hey, stop the run while you're getting after the quarterback. And by that, I mean a lot of defensive linemen, I think they, they two-gap and they just hold there and they see where you're going and then they make the attack. I think the way that Gerald Chapman coached the defensive line is that we're going to be firing off the ball, trying to get into the backfield, and we're going to stop the run while we have to get but – but we're trying to fire after quarterbacks. So that's, that's the priority. Will Harris in the secondary. Emphasis on tackling, much appreciated. Uh, Florida's secondary last year was just the worst tackling I think I've ever seen. Uh, you look at the missed tackle numbers on this entire team. First off with Scooby Williams, not surprising. Very bad tackler in space. But next next highest missed tackle rate, Jaden Hill, or actually Jaden Hill had a higher missed tackle rate, but, but less missed tackles. Jaden Hill, 12 missed tackles last year. Miguel Mitchell, 10 missed tackles last year. Bryce Thornton, eight missed tackles last year. Jordan Castell, eight missed tackles last year. Uh, Jason Marshall Jr., five missed tackles last year. RJ Moten, four missed tackles last year. Jalen Kimber, four missed tackles last year. Um, going down to the next DB, Jakeem Jackson had one. Shreve Denson had one. Devin Moore had one. And that's missed tackles. That is not even including when they just took horrible angles. The LSU read option where Princely didn't contain Jaden Daniels ran up the left sideline. Uh, Bryce Thornton ran into, I believe it was Jordan Castell getting blocked. And then Jaden Daniels just kept going. Like things like that should not happen anymore. The angles were horrible last year. Should be improved this year. And I will say this, for, for Will Harris, players, and by this I mean guys who were in the NFL, guys who are still in college, players seem to really relate to him. But I, don't, I don't know what it is, but players seem to love Will Harris. And that's great. Like that, That's fantastic. I think a lot of coaching is you need to be respected but also liked. I think that there's too many people that go, oh, you can just be feared by them. Like, make them respect you, and that's it. I think you got to be respected and liked, and that's the best way to get what you need out of these guys. And also for Will Harris, I'll say, like, his time at Washington, when he got hired, I, I will say that I was not even skeptical, but I was cautiously optimistic, I said. Because when he was at Washington, they had a first-round pick after first-round pick after first-round pick. However... He also had Jimmy Lake as the head coach, D.C. Jimmy Lake was there. And if you are unfamiliar, Jimmy Lake is one of the best defensive back developers of the past 25 years. We'll say, we'll say of 25 years, so of, of this millennium. One of the best defensive back developers, Jimmy Lake. He's up there, okay? So Will Harris was working under Jimmy Lake, and when he, Will Harris got hired, I said, hey, I don't know how much of it was Jimmy Lake. I don't know how much of it Will Harris. But here's the two scenarios. One scenario, Will Harris was hands-on with people and he was the one developing, doing a lot of the development. Or Jimmy Lake was doing a lot of the development 
and Will Harris was watching him do that. So Will Harris saw one of the best DB developers. That's why I'm like, you know what? I'm opt- I'm cautiously optimistic because the caution comes from him not doing it himself. But even if he wasn't doing it himself, he was witnessing one of the best to do it. Do it. So I'm cautiously optimistic. But I, I think there's plenty of reasons to be pretty optimistic about this Florida Gators defense being at least average in 2024. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free by in the podcast and on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Florida Gators football for Locked On Gators. I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Uh, find the Florida Gators Dynasty airing tomorrow. Again, another episode tomorrow with Whole Nine Sports YouTube, W-H-O-L-E-N-I-N-E Sports. And I'll see you all next time.